What's going on, Fearless Fam? So check this out. Today we're gonna to talk about the five things I would tell my younger, nicer guy self that I know today that I didn't know then. Things that would have saved me a lot of time and got me what I wanted. Now, looking back, when I was a younger, nicer guy, I was very quiet, very shy, very much a people pleaser, did not like to start conflict. The idea of conflict scared me. Didn't feel like I could handle myself. It made me very unhappy because I wasn't going directly for what I wanted because again, that level of tension always terrified me. So there was always the fear of abandonment, the fear of failure, and um, ultimately it was a fear of shame and abandonment mixed together. And so when it came to women, I felt that same feeling tenfold, the fear of abandonment, the fear of rejection, the fear of being shamed, so that when I would actually meet girls, I would close up, I would shrink, I would be small, I wouldn't be big, Gregorious energy. I played it safe. Looking back on what I know now, which is quite different from what I knew then, I would have been a lot bigger. I would have, I would have, I would have pissed a lot more people off, <laughs> right? I would have really stepped on some toes to get what I wanted because at the end of the day, what it came down to was being real is better than being nice. Being real is better than being nice. People pleasing doesn't really get you what you want. I know it might seem like it does. Be agreeable. Don't start conflict. Don't piss anybody off. Don't push anybody's buttons. Stay safe. Don't take any risks. Don't do things that will potentially leave you broke, uh, leave you abandoned, uh, things like that, right? They just keep you in this box. It's an unhealthy box because you become very dissatisfied with life and you become very unhappy. And my younger, nicer guy self was very unhappy. I made other people happy. Other people love being around me. <laughs> I was a yes man. Of course they did, but I wasn't happy. I was beating myself up. When I was at home by myself, I didn't like myself and nothing good came of that. It wasn't until I started doing the work with Fearless that I actually started to see that I had a nicer guy. And I didn't even know what the concept was. It was like reading Robert Glover's book, No More Mr. Nice Guy, really pointed out to me all the little things that I was doing to avoid conflict. And I read that book and I was kind of pissed off. I was like, Ugh. like, yeah, that's me. But then I started to feel like I was bad for that, right? And it's not that I was bad for that. It's just that I wasn't getting what I was wanting out of life for that. That was the reason I was hating myself. That was the reason I wasn't enjoying myself. There was no self-love. Right? I was very much people pleasing. I wanted everybody else to be happy at it. I, I wasn't happy. Looking back on it now, that was relatively four or five years ago when I first started doing this work, very short period of time when you think about it. In the scheme of things, a lot has changed. The more I pushed against the nice guy tendencies, the more I started to get what I want. I got the money that I wanted. I quit my job of 10 years. I started to travel. I started to have way more sex. I started to have way more women. I started to have some of the hottest women I've ever dated in my life that I used to fantasize about back when I was a younger, nicer guy. Because again, it's not about being nice, it's about being real. And people respect real. So what does it look like to break the nice guy up? What does it look like to go from a nice guy to being more real? Now think about it, if you're on a date with a girl and your intention is to go out and have fun and hook up, and her idea is to go out and meet a friend or have a friend or have a relationship, you might just be honest with them. Like, look, I know you're looking for something more relationship-based, but I'm only looking to have fun and hang out and hook up. And uh, since I know that, it's probably better that we go our separate ways. It was good hanging out with you. Best of luck. The nicer guy self will be like, okay, she says that she wants a relationship or a friend. I'll just hang out and kind of see what happens. But you're not really owning your stuff. You're not really being um, honest. And the more honest you are, what you do is, you give the girl an opportunity to make a decision whether she wants to continue on the date with you, which would then change the whole vibe of the date because now that she knows that you want that, if she's still hanging around there, then she knows what she's gonna get from you. She knows what to expect. In doing that, a lot of times you'll get girls with either A, leave and go for what they want, which is fine, or B, they'll change the way they're being on that date with you, get a little closer, touch you more, be a little bit more feminine towards you, playing with their hair, flirtatious, and you'll get a whole different version of the girl. And all that happens when you start to push against the nice guy behavior, right? So we're gonna talk about that in this video. Before we get back into the video, please consider hitting like and subscribe because you hit like for the very reason that we wanna fool around with the algorithms so that we get the videos in front of the guys who really need it. Guys like you, guys like me, who are trying to be the best versions of themselves in the dating sphere, 
who are trying to go out and have the dating lives that they want, who are essentially just trying to blow the whole thing up and become the best at it. Or go out and get the girl that you want, get a girlfriend, improve how women respond to you in the real world. Also hit subscribe so that you guys don't miss out on videos from me on approaching, going out in field, meeting new women, grounding tension, but also Brian's videos on becoming a more solid man. And he's constantly got new ideas that he's throwing out, new things that he's learning that he's directly giving to you guys. So you guys don't wanna miss out. But also the live Q and A's so that you, if you guys have specific questions that you need answered, you guys get them answered right there on the spot by me, Brian, Josh, or Sam, or anybody on the team who's doing the Q&A that day. So anyways, guys, we wanna give that to you as much as we can, so go ahead and consider hitting like and subscribe. And also guys, remember, only the confident really live. Now, back to the topic. Number one thing that I would tell my younger, nicer guys self that I didn't know then, but I know now, is to embrace your masculinity, but also that, vulnerability is masculinity as well. Because when I was when I was much younger, I was definitely pushing away my masculinity. I didn't, uh, I didn't have a good relationship with it. I had a better relationship to my feminine, but I didn't have a big relationship with my masculine. And I rejected my masculine. I, je I rejected the part of me that can be very straightforward, can be very direct, can be very penetrating, can be very inclined to create tension and to step into more tension. And I didn't really didn't learn that until I started taking fearless work. Actually, I didn't realize, I didn't understand the concept of tension and how you can use it to create a better life for yourself. Only my masculinity and being around people who are also masculine, stepping into challenges, um, sports, being around guys more. It was, it's a lot of what I rejected, especially if you're like a nice guy and you're probably a good chance to raise more by your mom than you were by your father. There's a good chance that you got a lot more feminine and masculine. So it may actually help you to be around more masculine guys. I don't mean toxic masculinity where they're just jerking each other around, but guys who are actually helping guys challenge each other and grow through tension, through challenges. Because um, it can be very healthy masculinity too, right? If you got the right people, not people who are out there trying to be machismo, trying to be uh, macho and hold up this bravado. Um, actual guys who are a little bit more vulnerable and are very intentional in what they're doing. Hope that helps you out. Um, I've grown a lot by doing the fearless work and a lot of the a lot of the growth came from stepping into the tension that I didn't want to step into or that I was very scared of stepping into because I didn't understand at the time again that that like Brian always says it the masculine domain is is tension men love tension we love physical tension we love challenges because that's how we grow from it and I didn't know that the more I started doing this work going out doing approaching that in itself was tension that was challenging but I grew a lot from it and I couldn't be happier with my day in life as it is right now. So anyways, guys, just want to drop that and help you guys out if you guys are on that journey to drop in the Nice Guy Syndrome. But also, don't forget, pick up the No More Missing Nice Guy. That's a great book by uh, Dr. Glover. Um, talks about that whole thing in there. And again, you might read that book and you might feel like he's reading you your life. <laughs> and that's okay. Let it hurt a little bit. Let it sting a little bit because from that, you can actually start doing the opposite of what you've been doing and start getting the results that you've been wanting. So number two. The number two thing that I would tell my younger, nicer guy self that I know now, but I didn't know then, is that my wants, needs, and desires both matter. Because that's the number one thing nice guys don't like to admit is that they have wants, needs, and desires. So they go their whole lives having them unmet or they haven't even acknowledged that they have wants, needs, and desires, which in the first place is already keeping whatever it is they want away from them. So in my journey, I had to learn what it actually is that I wanted. And I was very scared to admit it because a lot of it was, there's a fear of rejection. There was a fear I wouldn't be able to get what I want. Uh, what's the point? I can't win, especially with women, right? That was a huge one. And uh, the more knowledge that I had wants, needs, and desires, they started to get met. First, it was with the women, certain type of women that I wanted that I wasn't able to get or that I was uh, shutting myself out from, right? My confidence was low. There was a certain type of woman that I wanted that was a 10 to me that I thought I couldn't have. And since doing the work with Fearless, I've had that type of woman many times. So again, it started off with recognizing that, hey, I actually want this. Like This is actually the type of woman I want, um, even though I feel like I can't get it. And the minute I start to hone in on it and focus on it and make that my intention and my mission, I started to move closer to getting it. And I finally got it. But again, I would have not been able to get it had I not looked at what I actually really wanted instead of being the nice guy, which was just taking what was coming to me, the low hanging fruit, not really going for what I wanted, not being the chooser. 
Speaking of which, we have a video on that. If you if you feel like you are one of those guys who is not the chooser, and you're essentially just taking what's handed to you, the low hanging fruit, especially in dating, go back and watch the chooser video. Um, that one will really be very insightful for you in terms of helping you make that shift from where you are now to receiving whatever's coming your way to actually going out and getting the girl that you want. That's number two, your wants, needs, and desires matter, not only in the realm of getting the girl that you want, but also in sex. What type of what type of things do you want to experience? What type of things do you want to explore? Women are open to that stuff. If you're open up enough to be vulnerable enough to share with them that, what you want. And I've had a lot of experiences that I, I would have never had had it not opened my mouth. All right, number three, the third thing I would tell my nicer guy self that I know now that I didn't know then, stop people pleasing. Stop being a yes man. It gets you nowhere. And it gets you around a bunch of people who are also yes people more, more than likely, or it would just put you around a bunch of people who want to take advantage of you or use you. Because you'll never say no. Now, this is that piece where we were talking about earlier in the fifth one where setting the boundary is so important here. And a lot of your boundaries are taken care of just by saying no. Not getting yourself in situations that you don't want to be in. When I was younger, coming out of high school, my friends want to go out to bars. They want to go um, to clubs. I never liked that stuff. Actually, I was really introverted. That's probably that's why I didn't like that stuff. Looking back on it, but I didn't at the time like it. But I would always say yes because I didn't have any grounding. I wasn't a very grounded person, right? So I was always go with the flow, go with the flow, go with the flow. And I'd always end up in the bar or in the club, standing on the wall, not happy, while my boys are out there getting girls, having fun, really enjoying it because I didn't say no. I'd much rather have been at home at the time. So stop people pleasing. Remember, you have no control over what anybody says or does. All you have control over is you. And when you control yourself and when you have better control over yourself, people respond to you a lot differently. They respond to you out of respect. They don't push things on you. You don't feel like people are burdensome. You don't feel like you wanna get away from people because you're solid in your in your own self, you're solid in your grounding, you're solid in your individuality. And that's a very nice feeling. Now, people also trust you more because when you say no, they know you mean it. Because if you're always saying yes, then they're always gonna expect you to say yes. The more you can say no, and then actually say yes, then they'll know that yes is a solid yes, and it's not like, it's just you going with the flow and not holding to your boundaries for yourself. So that's a super important one I would tell my nice guy that I didn't know five years ago. Number four, fourth thing that I would tell my younger, nicer guy self that I didn't know then that I know now is that women love sex equally as much as men do, if not more. Because at the time, I felt very predatorial. I felt very shameful, very bad for wanting to have sex, for seeking sex, for trying to get close to girls, for trying to touch girls because that was my nice guy paradigm. That was my outlook on life. Uh, I, was great. I was raised partly in a Christian, very Christian family. We never talked about sex. We never talked about dating. We never talked about any of that stuff at all, ever. And so I had to learn it through friends in the neighborhood, which was conflicting to the ideas that I learned in my family, which is that you should get close to girls. You should touch them. You should be confident around them. You should go for sex, all right? Not only for sex, not to sound pervasious, but sex is okay is the is the message that they were given and it, I, it was a conflict right i couldn't i couldn't justify it because my morals were different they were set different as a kid and so i had a very difficult time throughout high school and learning how to be more free sexually right and, and how to navigate that so what ended up happening is i didn't have a lot of sex especially earlier on especially in my early 20s i didn't have a lot of sex at least not a lot of sex that i enjoyed because <laughs> there's a difference between having sex and having sex that you actually enjoy with people that you actually want to have sex with. And I wasn't getting that sex. As I learned by doing the fearless work, I, I joined fearless probably at 29 years old, right? I learned that year that women really love sex. And it takes a very grounded and solid guy or also even, even more sexually open guy and a sexually, sexually expressive guy in order to draw that version of a woman out of her because essentially women do want to be open, but they want to be open sexually by a guy who knows what he's doing. They want it to go smooth. 
it, they don't want it to be clunky. They don't want any shame involved with it. They don't want the guy shaming her for enjoying sex, loving sex. And once you start to get that, and then you start to express that in your interactions, on your dates, you start realizing that you'll probably have a lot more first date sex experiences than you've ever had. But two, that women enjoy being in that space as long as you're comfortable being in that, in that space first. So what I would tell my younger, nicer guy self is that it's okay to enjoy sex. Sex is not a bad thing. Sex is actually a really good thing. And it's a really great bonding experience, whether or not you choose to be with this person long term, short term, or just for the night, it doesn't matter. It's still a great, nice, a great intimate bonding experience. So the fifth thing that I would tell my younger, nicer guy self that I didn't know then that I know now is that setting boundaries garners respect. Now, earlier on, setting boundaries, I had a fear around it because it created conflict or potentially created conflict, which in the nice guy case, creating conflict is always a potential for abandonment. And that's the one thing the nice guy doesn't want to experience, abandonment. So at all costs, he's people pleasing, not saying no where he should be saying no, not letting certain people that he hangs around go and constantly entertaining these people, which is not serving them. And it's actually just making him lose respect for himself more. So what does a boundary look like? One, it's hanging around people that are not encouraging, uplifting, positive, um, who think they can do and say whatever they want around you, who are not essentially not showing respect, who are taking more than they're giving from you is another one. Guys, get this a lot with women and that's why we have a lot of communities like red pill migto and things like this where guys have this negative outlook on women but the truth is that people are constantly teaching or telling other people how to treat them through subconscious behavior and if your subconscious behavior isn't reflecting that you're a guy who is to be respected then you're not going to get that simple and plain so what you got to do is you got to learn how to tell people no which is huge for nice guys. Telling people, no, stop people pleasing. If there's something you don't like, vocalize it. If there's something that you do not like, vocalize it. Don't let it just get swept under the rug because if you don't express how you feel, people are gonna keep coming around treating you that way as a, as a guy who is okay with that type of behavior. There's been times I've had to set boundaries with the girls and I was like, I really don't want to set this boundary with this girl because I know it's going to go haywire and it's going to go all over the place. She's probably going to leave. And in most cases, she didn't leave and she understood exactly what I meant. Or if she couldn't see it, she took a moment to kind of reflect and look at it and then stop the behavior. And then I got a better version of that girl ultimately. So again, number five, set boundaries. It makes people respect you. They may get mad at first, but then they'll start showing up differently for you. And I have a story about that and I'll give it to you guys at the end of this video. So uh, stay to the end, okay? All right, so you guys a bonus. <laughs> so we were talking a little bit about boundaries earlier and uh, I had a really great example of a boundary story. And I told the story many times before, but if you haven't caught it before, uh, I'll tell you to you right now. So when I first came into Fearless, I had a uh, chick that I was hanging around and we would do music together. She come to my house, she flirt with me, touch but she would never when i would go to make a um to take initiative and lead and kiss and touch and get sexual i'd always get rejected and so i was like i don't understand what's, what's happening because she's flirting with me she's giving me all these signs but it's not going where i want to go at and so um and i'm taking the fearless workshop uh talked to brian a little bit about it and brian was like you know you're, you got to set a boundary you gotta learn how to set a boundary with this girl and it's probably going to hurt and she's probably going to leave and um i remember thinking to myself damn i really don't want to do this because she's such a great friend but she's also a friend of a friend and i didn't want to mess that up and so i was like whatever it's got to get done because it's not working the way it's it's going right now so i went back home she came over one night started doing the same thing again kind of the, the flirting and being very girly and flirtatious and when i go to uh, make the move i get rejected so what i ended up doing was I ended up being like, look, we got to stop doing this. Like I told her, and uh, I was like, you can't keep coming over here and doing this because you're very, it's very distracting from what we're we're doing music-wise. And she was like upset, like didn't know how to take it, got really defensive, got really pulled back and withdrawn, and grabbed her keys and was like, I gotta go. 
And so I was like, all right, fuck, what did I just do? <laughs> My nice guy, I was like, man, I just messed this up. I feel so stupid. So I took her down to her car. She hopped in and just sped off. And uh, I hadn't talked to her for like maybe two months since that incident. And uh, as she completely forgot about the incident, and then she hit me up one time, I'm hanging out with a friend. And she's like, well, I want to come see you. And I was like, okay, we'll come through. And so she came over and she was looking dolled up from head to toe. And I was like, okay, this is different. So we ended up hanging out. We hung out with my friend. She had, uh, brung, she had brung her girlfriend with her too. And so we all ended up hanging out. And when me and her got alone after hanging out with her friends, it got very intimate, very fast. And I was just like, what the hell happened? And I can credit all that back to setting that boundary. Had I not set that boundary, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have had that experience. So guys, going forward, if you're scared to set boundaries, don't be. There's a lot more life on the other side of the boundaries. If not, you end up getting rid of somebody who was not really serving a purpose in your life anyway. All right. Anyways, guys, that's my bonus material. I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.